I can't say enough about my education at Loyola. Um, number one, it taught me to think in a different way. And not only just think critically, but think about the ethics of what we do and about the mission of providing health care in a thoughtful and compassionate manner. I really love being a nurse. I love what I do. The school was an amalgamation of five existing hospital schools of nursing. These were uh, diploma schools that granted only a diploma to graduates, but not a degree. They came together in 1935. The following year, 1936, St. Francis in Evanston was added, and that became the sixth school. Sister Helen Jarrell was the first dean of Loyola University School of Nursing. It was Sister Jarrell who knew that nurses will need to be educated with a four-year de degree program who really needed a complete academic education. She was a bit stern. When the school became affiliated with Loyola University, she gave the uh, students lectures about not sitting on boys' laps and being very modest in their dress when they attended dances. She was very strict and stern, but we loved her. We realized that we were living in a, a religious life, even our Protestant girls. <laughs> Morning prayer, uh, over to the hospital through the tunnel for mass, back over to get our assignments. Initially, the Loyola campus was for men only. You have to blame it on the Jesuits. They, the, the Jesuits always wanted to keep men and women separate, and that's the old, that's the way things used to be. And it was felt among the Jesuits that uh, women might distract the Jesuit scholastics from their studies. The Loyola nursing students actually marked the beginning of the entrance of other women into Lakeshore campus and led to the school becoming coeducational. In 1947, Gladys Canary was appointed the Dean of the School of Nursing. In the 1948-1949 school year, they began the first four-year program in nursing education. She had, I think, a, a difficult time at first convincing the uh, powers that be up at the uh, Rogers Park campus that they had to have their own lab courses on the campus with men. So uh, she begins this process really of looking at how we're going to integrate science in education and really women and men learning together. The public health nursing program was started at Loyola in 1937 and it grew and flourished particularly during the time of World War II. And many nurses were recruited and did join the military. However, Dr. Dorothy Rood, who at that time was the director of Loyola's program in public health nursing, kept reminding her students that they were desperately needed on the home front, that uh, indeed they would be the ones that would provide primary care to patients because so many nurses and physicians were abroad with the war effort. We were cadet nurses. That is, if the, uh, we graduated and the war was still going on, which they assumed wasn't going to be, we would uh, go either to the Army or Navy. Army was the oldest women's component. We received our uniforms and we marched several times on campus uh, in our uniforms. It was certainly uh, not the campus that you see today aesthetically. It was uh, a few buildings and a converted garage for Wilson Hall, but uh, I would say a vibrant faculty, both at uh, 
the Lakeshore and the Water Tower campus. We rotated our clinicals throughout the city, including out here to Heinz, uh, to Cook County Hospital, a hospital for maternity nursing that no longer exists at 31st and Michigan Lewis Memorial Maternity Hospital. So when I first started at Loyola, women were not allowed to wear slacks or to wear slacks in the library. And as everybody can remember, it was extremely cold always in the wintertime at Lakeshore Campus. So I remember I went to the library in my stirrup stretch pants and the gentleman who was the director of the library said, you can't wear those in here. So I said, okay, I will take them off. So I started to unzip my pants and he said, no, 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 okay, you can wear them. So I believe I was the first woman to wear long pants in the Lakeshore Library. Damon Hall was built during the mid-1960s. The government was willing to give large amounts of money to ease the nursing shortage. We did, quote, own two of the floors. It was built with Kellogg grant money. The first graduate program in nursing was established at Loyola in 1964. And one of the main innovators in this movement was Dr. Imogene King. She made the argument that Loyola uh, should get the funding because it would be foremost in preparation of faculty who would then be able to teach in the new associate degree programs. And it worked, and our graduate program has flourished ever since. During the Vietnam era, uh, any nurse, any student in a baccalaureate program um, was entitled to have the final two years of her education paid for by the government. I was stationed in San Diego, California during the Tet Offensive, which was in the fall of, of 1968, where there were many casualties. So on the day shift, there was uh, three nurses and a couple of corpsmen for 45 people. On the PM shift, there was one nurse for 90 patients. And on the night shift, I was the only nurse for 360 patients. So that was quite a different model than you would see in hospitals today. 